Zemo! What's going on guys, it's Zemo, and today I'm going to teach you about the field in Yu-Gi-Oh! Now before we get into the basics on how to play Yu-Gi-Oh!, it's important to know where each of these cards can be placed on the field. The field is a standardized way in which every player arranges their cards for gameplay. There are several different zones that make up the field, and we'll be going into each of these areas more in depth later on, but for now, let's go ahead and break down each element of the field piece by piece. Let's start with the monster zone, since it takes up a majority of the field. This is where you play monsters. Now a player can only have a maximum of 5 monsters on their side of the field at any given time. This also goes for the spell and trap zone. A player can only have a maximum of 5 spell and or trap cards on their side of the field at any given time as well, whether they're face up or face down. Now next up is the deck zone. The deck zone is for your pre-constructed deck of between 40 to 60 cards and is placed in this zone at the start of a match once the decks have been cut and shuffled. There is some leniency in this as some players are left handed and others feel more comfortable with their deck being placed higher on the field. But in general, as long as players understand where everything is on their opponent's field, then that's really all that matters. Next up is the extra deck zone. This zone is for your constructed extra deck of between 0 and 15 extra deck cards, and the extra deck is placed in this zone face down at the start of a match. Not all players use an extra deck with their strategy, but if you are using one, it must be visible to your opponent to confirm that they are in fact using an extra deck. Next is the field spell zone. This is specifically for field spell cards which are indicated by the shuriken shaped crest icon on certain spell cards. Field spell cards are not placed in the traditional spell and trap zone and are instead placed in this zone. We'll be going into the specifics of field spell cards much later on as well. Next up is the graveyard. When monsters are destroyed or when spell and trap cards have been resolved, they are placed in the graveyard face up. It's very important that you do not change the order of the cards in your graveyard unless a card effect specifies otherwise, as there are some cards that rely on the order of cards in your graveyard to be used properly. Also, your opponent can look at the cards in your graveyard at any time. This, alongside knowing if whether or not you are playing an extra deck, is called public knowledge. Now lastly, we have the pendulum zones. These two zones are specifically used for pendulum monsters, but we'll be covering that topic at a much later time. Now one final zone that isn't shown on the field is the Banish Zone. Typically when a card is used, it is sent to the graveyard. However, in some cases, cards can be banished instead of being sent to the graveyard. This is important because if a card is banished, a card that might interact with cards in your graveyard cannot interact with cards that are in the Banish Zone. For example, a card like Monster Reborn says, target one monster in either player's graveyard, special summon it. Now if a monster has been banished, then it cannot be brought back with Monster Reborn. While this zone is not depicted on the field, traditionally it rests to the right hand side of the graveyard. Now I hope you guys enjoyed this video explaining the field in Yu-Gi-Oh! As always, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe for more in-depth content on how to play Yu-Gi-Oh! See you next!